Podcast. How are you doing, everybody? Hello, everyone out there in internet land. Over there on the other side of the screen. How are you? Yeah. I hope you're good. Uh, I'm good. Will? All right. <laughs> Hanging in there. <laughs> we got... Uh, 16 months from Dandy Mira, 16 months. Woo! We got K-, K Mitz with two months. Finally able to catch you live after years of watching you on YouTube day after day. Hello, how are you? Welcome. You finally got a Twitch. WD Spyro Girl with nine months. You guys are awesome. Thank you for all the uh, much appreciated hard work you do. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Mr. Fizz with five months. Here is my Twitch Prime sub. Remind me again next month. All right, you got it. Alexa, remind me in a month to subscribe to the Wolf Den. Thank you so much. And I hope that went off on all of your Alexas. It went off on mine. And she's mad at me right now. Alexa, stop! Travel Steinberg, thank you for the 50 bits. Oh, yeah, podcast time. Keep up with the good work. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Guys, we got to talk about the big old event that happened today. Yeah, we had ourselves in Indie World Direct from Nintendo, the last of the year. And it was it was a pretty big one, I would say. It was, uh, we had an Indie World showcase that was 17 minutes long. Yeah. And there was a lot of good stuff in it. This was probably the best oh, yeah. Indie World that I've seen in a long time. It even had, it even had a, a one more thing at the end. I mm-hmm. will say the commentary on the indie world, not the best. <laughs> nope, always bad. <laughs> not that. Well, I would say always bad. This time and, it was particularly bad. And you know something? It was a. Usually they have like all the Nintendo directs have the same guy. This was like a, a duo. And no, I don't no, particularly like this they've duo. They've had duos before. Have they? Yeah. Because it had. seems like every time I watch a direct, it's always the same guy. Well, this is this is a uh, for the directs they have one guy for the indie worlds right. some they they I think mostly have two people. But uh, the dude maybe who just... normally does the indie world directs mm-hmm. quit like a few months ago. Really? Yeah. So he stopped. He stopped doing them. There was like a whole goodbye thing. It was, it was, whole, oh, it was a whole deal. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss his dulcet tones. Uh, yeah. So this is the new guy, and I don't like the new guy. Um. <laughs> Or whoever's writing for the new guy. Anyway, it's not about the writing of the indie world. We got to talk about the games that they had. Yeah. They had a lot of good games. And we'll go through each one of them and tell you which ones are the important ones to care about. And there were some that I'm very happy that we finally have news about. Yes. Uh, Do you want to go in order of what they announced? Yes, I do. Okay. So right off the bat, they announced Spelunky 2. Uh, but not only that, they also announced that the original Spelunky, which I didn't know was uh, was not on the Switch, is also coming to Switch. So Spelunky 1 and 2 are coming to the Switch in summer of next year. Yeah, I honestly didn't know this either. I didn't know that these yeah. games were not already on the Switch. I mean, Spelunky 2, like, that's a newer game that came out this year. So I guess that's not surprising. But, like, Spelunky 1 is on the Vita. <laughs> so like you would assume you would assume that that would just be on the switch already yeah and, and, and splunky 2 they said they have a uh, local co-op which is interesting because i think that uh, that's i think local co lo, a local multiplayer i'm sorry yeah, yeah I, think I think the multiplayer is co-op i think uh well i think splunky 1 it's local and splunky 2 it's online it's it says in the trailer uh, yeah i forgot to take notes um, local multiplayer for Spelunky for so just the first one, I guess. Lo- okay. Wait, no, uh, uh, local and online for Spelunky too. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, that's weird because I what happens when the characters move apart? I guess the screen just gets massive. Yeah, because <laughs> it's a big map, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't. I wasn't expecting a local multiplayer. All right, well, are you going to read the thing? Yeah. Uh, With Spelunky and Spelunky 2, brave your way through treacherous tunnels and caverns outfitted with the survival supplies you find along the way, featuring dense worlds teeming with secrets, surprises, and slapstick hilarity. Each time you play promises danger and delight. Watch out for leprechauns, ghosts, 
flying fish and galloping turkeys as you explore the unknown, plunge into Spelunky and Spelunky 2, when both games launch on Nintendo Switch summer 2021. I have never played Spelunky. I think I've played the first one, and then I realized it was a roguelike, and just realized I don't think I'm going to like this game. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like the multiplayer would be really fun. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't... uh... I haven't touched it. Maybe I will now. That's on the Switch. Uh, also, side note, uh, this has the furthest out release date out of all the games announced uh, in the in the Direct oh. today. Uh, <laughs> they're all either like, you know, launching today or the latest uh, early or Q1 of 2021. This one specifically says summer. Maybe they like delayed it right before the announcement. Or Maybe. Something. Maybe it was supposed I to be like in this direct is, and then they delayed it. Because I feel like that is pretty late for a game like this. You'd think they'd, they'd have it like more readily available. Yeah, and maybe they would have put this in a different indie direct. Yeah. Not necessarily this one. This one already had a lot of good stuff. They didn't need to put Spelunky yeah. in. Yeah. Um, anyway, what's next? Fist of Fluffs. Get oh. it? It's like Fist of Cups, but with cats. Oh, this is it. It's right so here. they're fluffy. Yeah. Watch out, these kittens have claws. In this physics-based party game featuring fierce felines, you'll need to whack and pounce your way to victory. Turn the playroom into a battleground by smacking into objects and launching them across the room. Experience the pinnacle of cat-tussling fun by uh, by proving your wobbly cat is the best cat. Take the competition locally at launch with online multiplayer coming in a post-launch update. The possibilities are mm, endless. Yep. Fisty, Fisty Fluffs gets frisky first on the Nintendo Switch Spring 2021. So it's uh coming to Switch first to all you all you cat people out there. This does not look good. <laughs> <laughs> I they, listen, it's it's not just because I don't like cats. It looks I mean, it looks like they're just flannel around. It's probably like that's part of the game kind of like gang beasts yeah like you're just mashing and like that's what the fun is yeah uh there are plenty of other games uh like you know that i would rather play <laughs> like like yeah. uh, third person fighting games <laughs> like for example gang beasts but i mean if you're a cat person then i could see the yeah. charm going on here this, this does not grasp me at all i'm sorry yeah, uh, this will probably be a skip from me as well. Um, but what might not be a skip for me is the next game, Very, Very Valet. This game looks Get awesome. <laughs> I don't think I have a trailer for Oh, no, there it is. It's in there. Uh, Get behind the wheel to pick up, park, and return cars in over 20 locations. Up to three other players can join you in this frantic and fun party game. Very, very valet accelerates onto the Nintendo Switch first as a timed exclusive in early 2021. This reminds me of that game No Breaks Valet. Yes. Uh, which is a mobile game. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's, it's a mobile game that you could play two players on one uh phone. And oh yeah, it, yeah. It it's just left, right, and break. And uh, you each each player sh- sh- you you have to park your car in a in a in a parking lot, but both yeah. both players will shoot out of well they'll shoot into the parking lot, and you just have to steer and brake and hope that you get into one of the parking spots. And yeah. you each hold one end of the phone. It's really cool. It, it gave me crazy taxi vibes, not necessarily because you know it plays similarly, but the idea of get this car based job done by any means necessary it kind of looks like i uh, mean the, it, it, the 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 parking spots have this sort of glow that they have in yeah crazy taxi yeah uh i'm looking up to see if uh this was made by toyful games i'm seeing if they've made anything else and it looks like they have not who made no breaks valet i don't know um Captain Games? I don't Never know. heard of them. I think it's free. I think No Breaks Valet is free. So try that out. But I mean, there you go. This looks good too. Uh, this looks like a sort of, what's it called? Uh, 
that cooking game. Oh. I know what you're talking about, and they just oh, announced the Swedish chef for that game. <laughs> yes, why am I having an aneurysm? Uh, holy overcooked, God. overcooked. Yes, overcooked. that was it. See the chat. The chat knows everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this looks. This is giving me overcooked vibes. It's one of those. It's like yeah. a, part, a four person party game. No breaks. Valet is two dollars. Two dollars. I think that's the perfect price for a mobile game. Yeah. Uh. All right. What's next? Uh. Tunchy. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, I don't know. Cause and it's funny because I was really into this one, and I don't know how to pronounce this <laughs> this name. Tunche. Uh, so, I don't know. Tunche. I, I don't know what well, language it is. I think it's Peru. It's Peruvian. Peruvian. Tunche Tunchi from Leap Game Studios uh, is a 2D beat 'em up game with breathtaking hand-drawn art set in the Amazon rainforest. It can be explored with one of five heroes, each of with each with their own distinctive skills and abilities, including Hat Kid, the protagonist from the 3D platformer A Hat in Time. Unravel the rainforest secrets in search of a mystical, a mythical beast, the Tunchi. In enjoy a unique experience every time you journey into the jungle, traversing different paths and facing fantastic creatures. With charming hack and slash combat, local co-op play, and a pinch of, pinch of shamanic witchcraft, you'll experience a magical tour of Peruvian legends and folklore. Venture into the jungle when Tunchi arrives first on the Nintendo Switch in March of 2021. Yeah, why is a hat kid in this? Why not? <laughs> I'm trying to see like if it's the same publisher or something. I don't think I don't think it is, but I mean it's it's one of those things where like indie game developers will like share their characters with each other. Mm -hmm. Like that that's a like that's a thing that happened. I was, the original Super Meat Boy had like characters from Bit Trip Runner in there that you can play as for no reason yeah, other than it, I think they're just friends. It, it it's weird to me that they're just gonna let you play it's one of five characters and you're just gonna right. play as hat kid but it seems right. like there's got to be some sort of licensing <laughs> deal or something. i'm sure oh, i'm like, sure they're in like i, I, I don't know. think they just said like here no they might know. have it's an indie game dude i don't <laughs> think they got the money for that <laughs> true i i think they might have just been like hey can we borrow your character and they're like okay whatever or maybe they're friends or something but it's weird like there should be yeah. some sort of licensing or like something because it's one of the five characters and it's the only one that's recognizable so far yeah that's weird. uh yeah i will say though because they had the developers introduce the game first and they're talking about how like it drew a lot from uh you know peruvian culture and legends and how it's, it's a very personal game for them and when, as they're talking about it i'm like thinking oh this is going to be another one of them weird uh you know esoteric journey meets gone home meets artsy fartsy indie game that like is really obtuse but like yeah. all the all the you know the journals will write glowing reviews about it and then i watched the video and it's just a brawler <laughs> yeah it's a beat up like it's a beautiful looking brawler and it's but i'm like oh now i'm excited for this this is right up my alley you can have my money now you like beat -em ups i do like i beat -em -ups. you like beat -em ups yeah i mean it's it's hard to make a good beat em up nowadays because they really should be 2D um, and it's easy to make them really boring and repetitive. But this looks really interesting. So I will definitely give this a shot. It's hard to make it not feel like you're just button mashing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, what's next here? Uh, if the oh, tunchy yes. Is, uh, we got oh, Cyber Shadow, baby. We played this at PAX, right? Yes, we sure did. Yes. Uh, we played it two years in a row at PAX. Well, no, you didn't come this year, but I I, right. I, I played it two years in a row at both PAX. Uh, all right. Cyber Shadow. Uh, dash, slice, and leap your way through futuristic levels as you take down more than a dozen apocalyptic bosses in this action platformer ninja game. The world has been taken over by synthetic life forms. A desperate plea, plea for help sets Shadow on a journey, not that Shadow, Nimbly navigate the ruins of Mecha City, leap past traps, and defeat the Techno Hordes. You can even scan an amiibo of a Shovel Knight series character for a little help from a fr from a familiar friend. Unlock the secrets to your ninja's clan to your ninja clan's ancient powers in Cyber Shadow, coming to the Nintendo Switch January twenty sixth, twenty twenty one. Ah, 
So we got a hard date there, January 26th. Hold up, hold up, hold up. All right. We're back. Sorry. Hey. <laughs> uh, anyway, Will was just reading the Cyber Shadow uh, synopsis. You, you can read it yourself. Uh, yeah. We, we, have uh, it on, we have it on screen right now. It, it's, a, it's a fancy ninja game, uh, 8-bit retro style. Uh, you can scan Shovel Knight Amiibos to get uh, Shovel Knight characters in it. And it's coming out January 26th of 2021. The first hard release date. of. Yes, the, this is the first time we're finally seeing a release date. It was supposed to come out, I think, yeah. two years ago. In the Probably, fall. as as will another game that uh, is also part of the Direct. This uh, is developed by one person. Yes. As far as I knew from two years ago when I played it. Um, and this is the first time we're hearing about Amiibo support. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we saw this recently in the Game Awards. We should have talked a little bit about the Game Awards, but I guess it was a little too... It was like five days ago. Um, yeah. There was a lot of stuff announced at the Game Awards. This was in a Game Pass showcase at the Game Awards, so this will also be on Game Pass eventually. Mm -hmm. It's unconfirmed if that will be at release, but it might be at release. So... Uh, you don't have to pay for it if you have Game Pass. You can just freaking get it. Yeah. On Game Pass. But I'm excited about this. It's basically uh, the original first and second Ninja Gaiden, but modernized. Yeah. It, it's by Yacht Club, but it's not. I mean, it's published by Yacht Club. It's, it's not developed by, by Yacht. Yacht Club. It's developed by some some guy. But it looks really freaking cool. And from Mom, what I played of it, it's plug really the router back good. in. Thank you, Luke Anton. You're supposed to be <laughs> muted. Um. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm very excited about that. Now we have yeah. final release. We have finally have a release date, of January twenty yes. sixth. Um. So I will be paying, playing it on January twenty sixth. This is uh probably the my favorite announcement from the uh, indie direct. It's it's definitely one of the ones that like got me excited because I hadn't seen this game in a long time, and then. Uh, to see it there, I'm like, oh yeah, Cyber Shadow. Forgot about that one. Yacht Club has a lot in the works, and so far this is the only one that has a release date. Yeah. All the and other stuff also... hasn't had a release date for yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> and again, Yacht Club isn't developing this game; they're just publishing it. Right. Right. So, yeah, we still have more to talk about, but I will get yeah. back to uh, uh, that when we wrap it up. Yes. Uh, next up was Calico, Magical Girls, Cat Cafes, and Cuddly Animals. What more oh. do you need in life? Uh, fill a cozy cafe with cute creatures, charming furniture, festive decorations, and yummy pastries. It's the perfect way to spend the day. Uh, oh, you can begin relaxing in Calico when it launches on Nintendo Switch today. Oh, there's a bug in here and I almost got it. Uh, yeah, this, uh, yeah, yeah, another cat game, Will. Yeah, that was perfect. So, the the woman who introduced the game, so uh, the polar bears? one of the people who worked at Peachy Keen Games, the developer of Calico, uh -huh. did she remind you of our Aunt Diane? <laughs> no. Because I'm looking at it, I'm like, she reminds me a lot of our Aunt Diane. She did not. Uh, this, I don't understand this game at all. Uh, Me neither. First of all, you have a tail. Yeah, oh, no, I, only I sometimes. Don't... Are you playing use... a cat? Or are you playing some weird creature that like likes cats? I don't understand. Well, now she's wearing a hat. Oh, that must yeah. be like customization options. Like you could wear different yeah. hats and stuff. Um, and there's a point where you're like tiny and you're like making food. You're like miniaturized. Yeah. I don't understand. This seems like a this seems like a furry game. Well. Oh, you, definitely you're collecting is. different uh, animals, and then you can get polar bears and wolves and stuff. No, it's definitely a furry game, but it's just I have no idea like what the hell is going on in it. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you know, can you explain what's going on in Mario? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you. That's easy. A plumber has to save a princess from a giant turtle monster. It's weird sound when you say it out loud, but at that's least what that's I'm sort saying. Of that's what. Well, here you have a cat cafe, and you can bring polar bears and stuff there. You can roll a giant fat cat in if you want, and you have a tail sometimes. <laughs> there you go. Uh. Just as weird. All right. Next. Well, it's available today for all you cat people. Oh, 
oh out yay there. today uh for the hell is it all right alba a wildlife adventure the award-winning studio that created Monument Valley is mm. cre- is delivering a new open-world experience, Alba, a wildlife adventure. In this game, even the smallest person can make a big difference. Join Alba as she visits her grandparents on, on a Mediterranean island, ready for a peaceful summer of wildlife exploration. But when she sees her beloved island in danger, she realizes that she needs to do something about it. Recruit volunteers for your cause. Help heal sick animals, clean up the wilderness, and ultimately save the island. A visually stunning season of exploration awaits in Alba, a wildlife adventure coming to Nintendo Switch in spring 2021. Uh, Monument Valley is one of the best mobile games that was ever made. Don't right? think I've played it. <laughs> You've never played Monument Valley? You played Monument I think Valley. I have, I, no, I think I have it, but I don't think I've played it. It's it's a puzzle game, but it's an amazing. I think I got I think game. I got it in one of those humble bundles that I bought just for Braid, and it came with like a thousand other games. <laughs> it's one of those games that I think uh, you play and you understand how games could be best developed for touch screens, yeah. or or the phone form factor. Uh, so they really nailed it. Uh, so this is probably going to be really good. Uh, I don't know anything about it i don't know if they've made anything since monument i think they made a second monument valley yeah they made it there was a second monument valley uh us two games yeah oh god God. get me out of here alba reminded me of alto remember that game that was another mobile game that's also really good yes it's just a snowboarding like line rider type game yeah um what we do Assemble Monument Valley 2, Lands End Monument Valley, Blip Blup, Whale Trail. Okay, so really just Monument Valley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and whatever Assemble is. Assemble looks pretty cool. All right. All right. Uh, next is Gnosia. Is that how you pronounce yeah, that? Yeah, there's a G in There's a hard yeah. G. Um, yeah. That's how the narrator was saying it. Yes, Gnosia. In this one-of-a-kind sci-fi adventure game, a spaceship is overtaken by aliens who can take the form of humans. Meet an eclectic cast of characters and help unravel their mysteries in a fascinating narrative spin on the social deduction genre where you can play up where you can play against up to 14 NPCs. Overcome your fears when Gnosia launches on Nintendo Switch in early 2021. The so, developer said something to the effect of when they when he like introduced the game before the trailer. The game's only about like an hour long. Oh, but the purpose is to like keep replaying it over and over again because the fourteen different NPCs lead to like a whole wide variety of different outcomes. Yeah, he said you'll you'll. It's not likely you'll have the same game twice. Yeah. Um, this basically just sounds like a single player Among Us. Or you're mm-hmm. just playing with a bunch of NPCs. Yeah. So it could be cool. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's sto- it's story it's, based, so it's basically just is the story good or not? <laughs> yeah. It's also very weeb. So. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna say not weeb enough. Will. Uh, you don't I think, think so? I, no, I think uh, it's, it just doesn't look anime enough. It's very artsy. Right. It's very pretty. I think we can. I think, you know, bigger eyes. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, f- flatter uh, uh, color. You thought I was going to yeah. say something else. Um, no, no, I knew you weren't going there. <laughs> all right, next. All right, next is Happy Game. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, was it? This game was solve, terrifying. Solve, solve unnerving puzzles, endure, uh, endure a few unsettling songs, and survive face to face encounters with suspicious smiley faces. Earn your sweet dreams in spring 2021 when Happy Game launches on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, this reminds me of that cartoon the Pop Tarts guy made. What's that called? Yes, cartoon? Uh, re- rejected. Yeah, rejected cartoons or whatever. Yeah, it reminds me of that. Uh, this is very scary looking. Oh yeah, it's horrifying. Uh, this looks like something that it, that uh, you would bring to the guidance counselor because you're afraid the teenager is going to kill somebody. 
the soundtrack sounded cool oh yeah uh apparently there's like a bunch of puzzles and stuff going on in it i don't know this is a hard one to explain <laughs> yeah yeah this, this is definitely a hard one to explain it's one of those things where you got to look at the trailer and be like do i like this art style do yeah. i want to be creeped out the whole time yeah tim burton like gaming daryl says yes that yeah I, I would say that like tim burton's drawings yeah um okay what else we got uh speaking of games we played two years ago at pax super meat boy forever mm -hmm. the highly anticipated sequel to super yes. meat boy has arrived in super meat boy forever meat boy and bandage girls adorable baby girl nugget has been kidnapped you'll get You'll get put through the grinder as you jump, slide, punch, and kick through several worlds containing thousands of hand-constructed levels that are randomly smashed together to create a unique gameplay experience with each save game. With bosses, secrets, dying, awesome music, vibrant art, and even more dying, prepare to face some intense challenges. Super Meat Boy Forever squishes onto the Nintendo Switch December 23rd as a console launch exclusive. So this is isn't news we actually knew about this at the uh game awards did we know it was gonna be a switch launch exclusive we got a date we got a date this so, is saying so I'd, I'd assume that they put in that trailer nintendo switch only because why would they put a date and not say what console it's gonna be on well because that it's also coming to pc that day this is only when it's coming uh, to yeah well let's see let's uh game awards Super Meat Boy Forever uh, Game Awards trailer. Uh, trailer of the Game yeah. Awards 2020. And we're just going to go to the end and see. It does not say... I could just play it, actually. <laughs> that goes right into Genshin Impact. <laughs> it doesn't say. It just says... Epic Games Store and then Team Meat. Okay. It did not say it was going to be on the Switch. Interesting. Right. Interesting. Uh, so here we learned this is going to be a Switch console exclusive uh, when it launches December 23rd. Uh, which is fine by me because I was going to get it on oh, that anyway. Yeah, absolutely. This is like the perfect Switch game. Uh, Beetle Wins says, I thought this was going to be an infinite runner. It is. That's the thing. That's the thing yeah. that has people uh, a little skeptical of this game. First of all, it's been in development for like a thousand years. It was yeah. supposed to come out in April uh, of... 2018, right? 2019. 2019, yeah. So we played it at PAX, and then at PAX, they were like, we haven't announced this yet, but we're going to delay it, uh, and we're going to yeah. say it's delayed until we finish it. Um. So and then they just never said anything about it again. They 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 said we're delaying it and we're gonna delay it until you finish it. And then mm -hmm. not a word was spoken about Super Meat Boy Forever until the game awards. That was it. Oh except yeah. when Cyberpunk got delayed for like the fourteenth time, <laughs> Super Meat Boy Forever tweeted, Now do you understand why we <laughs> didn't put a release date out? <laughs> and I was like, Ah, oh, it all makes sense now. So yeah. finally we're gonna have this game. Anyway, yeah. it's an endless runner. Which is making people skeptical because the original right. Super Meat Boy was just a platformer. It was a very hard right. platformer, but it was a it was a platformer. Um, the, the the I mean, you should watch our video from PAX 2019 because this yeah. game's in it. I think it's like in the middle, and we talked to the developer, and he brought up a he kind of convinced me why. Well, first of all, he was bored with making platformers. He didn't even play Mario. He's never played Mario Maker before. I can I can see he probably he seems like the type of guy who's like very into what he does. He he <laughs> and doesn't want to like deviate. He decided he was like I want to do so I want to make it different. I don't want to make the same game again. So uh, yeah, he's like, how can I make it as simple as possible? B basically, when you're playing a platformer like Super Meat Boy or like Mario, when I play Mario, I just hold mm -hmm. right and B the whole time, so I'm running the whole time. So those buttons don't have to be there if I'm holding them the whole time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this you can play this whole game with two buttons. It's it's uh basically uh dash and jump and that's it. The game yeah. runs for you and, and that's it. So uh 
yeah I, I mean i played it and, I, and it was really good for me so i was sold yeah i i, I played it and then once you get used to it it runs just fine like you, ha- you can have fun like going through the levels like that i just kind of uh think that this would be best on a phone i'm going back to that again because if it's only two buttons that's good for a touch screen left side of the screen right side of the screen i don't know because when it comes to jumping like you it feels best with like a tactile button press rather than just hitting like the screen oh yeah I think, I think a tactile button press is is the best yeah. but uh i mean i like the switch because of its convenient form factor and how i could take it wherever i want even though i mostly play it on my desk anyway i just like having the option to take it anywhere the phone is the the pinnacle of that it is it is the most convenient it's the thing that you always yeah. have with you the least convenient part is the fact that it only has a touch screen but a game like this would work just fine on there i think and it would be great if it had cross save that would be sick yeah uh but they they said they were probably gonna port it to the phone but it's probably gonna take a while to do that um not anytime soon I'd imagine it, it would end up on Game Pass eventually. I don't know if that's confirmed or yeah. anything. Uh, uh, n- and nothing's confirmed, but that definitely seems like a Game Pass game. Yeah. Uh, so this is another one I'm super excited about. This was a big. Yeah. This was a big deal announcement at the Game Awards. Now, really, the only new information is that it's going to be on the Switch as a console exclusive at, at the yeah. very beginning, uh, the, as a timed console exclusive. Um. So this is one of the three big deals in this whole Indie World announcement. Yes. All right, what else? Uh, After that is Grindstone from Capybara Games. Cappy's hit puzzle uh, puzzle battler Grindstone smashes its way onto the Nintendo Switch. Clobber creeps to rack up huge combos and earn precious Grindstones. Cash in your Grindstones to craft new gear and overcome devious enemies obstacles and boss encounters as you conquer grindstone mountain uh with more than 200 brutal levels to tackle get ready to rise get ready to rise grind and repeat when grindstone gets its console launch on the nintendo switch as a timed exclusive later today a lot of a lot of later today is happening yeah which means right now probably yeah because this happened earlier Today. Yeah, I haven't checked the Switch store yet, but I'm pretty sure these are all, any game that was supposed to come out today is up today. Um, this yeah, this didn't particularly interest me. It's just not my type of game. It looks cool, yeah. but it's not my not my thing. Yeah. Uh, after that, we got just the the montage of quick games. None of the uh, games in the montage really stuck out to me. No. Uh, f- when the past was around, it's out today. Uh, Cosmocrats comes March 2021. Times console exclusive. Uh, Hoa is April 2021. Hazel Sky is March 2021. Trash Sailors, which sounds like my new favorite insult, <laughs> uh, is spring 2021. And Finding Paradise, also spring 2021. And then they had the big one more thing, which was the biggest deal probably of the whole yep. thing. Even though my favorite was still Cyber Shadow, but the biggest deal to probably a wider audience. Very is. big deal. Uh, Among Us, probably the actual game of the year. Uh, is now is coming to the Switch later today, featuring cross-platform play. That's great. Yeah, uh, I'll probably have to stream this. Yeah, I'll probably have to actually play it now. Uh, yeah, you need to play it because it's it's on the fucking yeah. phone too. I know, but With cross-platform uh, play. You know, you know, you know me. I don't like people. I don't play multiplayer games. So- uh, my. My wife caught some of her students playing it, though, in in class. <laughs> I believe so, that. And she's so she's asking me about, like, what's Among Us? So I'm telling her all about it. And now it's on the Switch, so she can play against her students. <laughs> you should show her the Wolf Den clip of Among Us. I, I think I will. Or I want to tear my freaking hair out. <laughs> this game gives me a freaking aneurysm. Discover which of your friends is a secret imposter in Among Us, the survival social deduction game that has taken over outer space by storm. Working together to complete tasks on a spaceship before the imposter sabotages or takes out the other players, think a crewmate is acting strange, call for emergency meetings and discuss who the suspected imposter is, but make sure you're confident before you vote to eject someone into the cold reaches of space. 
So uh, did you see that during the Game Awards, it was announced that you can get a Jeff Keighley mask? I did not see the Jeff Keighley mask. I saw the plane, the, the new level that you, you're on a yes. plane. That's from Harry Stickman, which apparently this guy also made. It's a different game. It's like one of those okay. new grounds flash game type yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, um, So uh, obviously the widely popular among us. Very cool. Yes. They said that they were going to be working on console versions, which yes. was scary because... Uh, uh, I don't. I didn't know how this would translate to console because there's a lot of mouse yeah. going on, and I mean, you could. There's also it's also on the phone, so you can touch it and stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, I didn't know how it would translate to 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 regular controls, and it looks like you know, every like sabotage is is mapped to a button and kill is mapped to a button. But then mm-hmm. you go to the tasks, and it's a cursor, so it looks like mm. you might have to use the thumbsticks to like select stuff i don't know how i feel about that i feel like on the switch it wouldn't be that big of a deal especially if you're in portable mode because then you can just use the touch screen yeah but i gotta stream it true so i'd have to use a controller and i don't want to do that Mm. i mean i'd have to just play it on freaking pc if i really wanted to get to it um uh would you be able to play this with no switch doesn't have mouse and keyboard support does it it has keyboard support. Hmm. It does not have mouse support. And I doubt this game would have keyboard support on the Switch. Yeah. <laughs> um, this game is only $5. It's $5 everywhere. So it was able to maintain that $5 even with the Switch tax. Yeah. So That's it did, good. It didn't. They didn't add anything just because it's on the Switch. Yeah. So this is great. This is good. And more people will be able to play Among Us now. Even though it was on the phone, yeah. anybody could have played it before. Only uh, play yes, this now game it's on... if you really, really, really love or really, really, really hate your friends. If you're somewhere in the yeah. middle, don't even bother with this game. I'm surprised you haven't played it. I'm surprised your friends didn't decide this was like a like a quarantine game. I don't know. Our my friends are like we're all over the place when it comes to like games and stuff. Because in the beginning was Animal Crossing, and now it's like. One one's playing Spider Man, one's playing uh, something else. I'm into cyberpunk, and I just clear through like my backlog real fast, my PS4 backlog anyway. Um, so yeah, and some of them are playing League, which pff, later for that. <laughs> but um, so as I said, my favorite announcements were uh, cyberpunk. I finally got a date for it. I've been waiting for that for a while. Yeah, Cyber Shadow. Oops. Cyberpunk is out. <laughs> Cyberpunk, not the game I've been waiting for for a while. Yeah. Cyber Shadow, the game I've been waiting for for a while. Um, fun fact, Cyber Shadow, probably not going to have any bugs in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Cyber Shadow, we got uh, Super Meat Boy Forever, finally, which we heard about at the Game Awards, but now we know it's a timed exclusive. Yeah. Uh, and Among Us. Yes. Which, honestly, I'd probably um, still play on PC, just because it's gonna be easier yeah but it's it's good uh, that it's on the switch all the games you said plus i'm going to throw in very very valet and tunchy very very valet looks very good because those are the two like caught me by surprise never heard of these games before but these look right. really fun uh very very val- valet i forgot about that game looks really good yeah uh also spelunky too it's great that that's coming to the switch yeah uh i wanted to read real quick uh stealth on twitter tweeted something that i thought was uh interesting Mm -hmm. uh no sports story no axiom verge 2 no hollow knight silk song a lot of people were hoping that we would get hollow knight i know wood i know kevin kenson were really hoping we get us the hollow knight no eastward i don't even know what eastward is uh no baldo no shovel knight dig Mm. and no azure striker gun vault 3 which is another game I've been waiting for. Uh, so there were a lot of games that we didn't hear about at the indie world. Games that we were right. thinking, the games that we've been waiting for for a while and we haven't heard about at all. Which I mean, we're kind of used to by now because of the whole pandemic and yeah, how Nintendo hasn't announced anything for a long time. Um, but 
I mean, we did get Super Meat Boy and Cyber Shadow, which were yeah. the biggest things that I was wondering about. So, but the only other things that he he says that I'm thinking about are Shovel Knight Dig, because that's been announced for a while. Yeah, and uh, Gun Vault Three, because I'm wondering what's happening with that. Uh, Shovel Knight I mean, Dig is. So everybody always thinks that the next Shovel Knight is going to be like, because the original Shovel Knight was 8 bit. Everybody thinks the next one is going to be 16 bit. Shovel Knight Dig looks like that, but it's yeah. unconfirmed if it's a sequel or not. It lo- It's developed by somebody else. So it looks like an offshoot, but it looks like that developer's like, how close can we get to a sequel without being a sequel? That's what yeah. it seems like to me. <laughs> but again, we don't know because they haven't said anything about the game. They just showed it and I played a little bit of it. It I feel like we like go through this every director, indie world, or whatever. There's always like a list of games that they didn't announce, mm-hmm. and I, I don't, I don't think that's healthy. I don't think it's it's healthy to sit there and get mad at like what they didn't say. Right. I, I you can still like be excited and anticipate all that stuff, but. Rather than dwell on the fact that they didn't specifically mention the game you were looking for, why not just be excited for the stuff that they did announce? Because they did announce a lot of cool stuff. I am excited that they announced the stuff that I cared about. <laughs> <laughs> this was probably the best indie world that I've seen in a really long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have no complaints. But I'm just pointing out that there are still a lot of indie games that are up in the right. air that we don't know about. Well, also to remember indie games take a long time to develop because it's usually just a very small group of people trying to do very ambitious things. Then again, I shouldn't say much because AAA development takes, you know, eight years and the game still comes out buggy and as hell hell. AJ says, uh, how dare you be reasonable? But Oops. also, uh, our stream crashed again. Nah. Hey, there we go. All right. All right. Ah, oh, it's it's all right. So Twitch gives you like a minute and a half uh-huh. to st- to reconnect before it ends the VOD. Okay. And Did I just I just missed it. Ah. Uh but I, but we're live. We're live right now. Okay. So all I did was create a new VOD. All right. Looks like I'm doing I, oh, no, I do I have to stitch it together or I'll stitch it together because uh okay. I'll stitch it together and just create a wave for you. Um Okay. Anyway. So what's happening when we disconnect is uh I have to change the, what server we're streaming from on Twitch because whatever for whatever reason the New York server it just disconnects every once in a while for us. I don't know why. There's there's no I have no solution for that. It just it just disconnects sometimes. So I changed the server. We tri- tried Virginia, and then that disconnected. Mm-hmm. We're trying Quebec now. There you, you go. Have, if you have any oh, potential cat. solutions, they need to have a backup server. I think YouTube has a way to have a backup server. Mm-hmm. Even though this happened on YouTube too, for us all the time, too. You, you would think that, you know, Twitch being powered by uh, AWS the number one web service provider in in the universe and being owned by the company that powers AWS, they would be able to, you know, prevent things like this from happening more often. And that but. server is the biggest farm for that ser- for that AWS is in Virginia, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um I, but you know, I think I, I this is a problem that I, I don't know any other streamers that have this problem. Only I have this problem. So mm-hmm. it makes me think it's my internet. However, I'm talking to you the whole time. I'm streaming to you also. You can see mm-hmm. everything that's happening that the stream can see. How yeah. come you can get it, but Twitch can't? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I put mine on auto server. I haven't had any connection issues. I started on auto server. Then I moved to Virginia because I assumed auto server went to New York. It should automatically switch to a different server is what it should do. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's read. That's it for the for the indie world. We're done talking about it. Yeah. 
Uh, let's read some notifications. Yes. Where did they go? We're okay. Travel time broke 50 bits. Oh yeah. Podcast time. Keep with the good work. Wolf boys. Thank you. We got dark crimson with four months. Thank you. We got Trevor Steinberg with 50 bits. Butts, 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 butts. We got, oh, look, it's Eddie with three months. Yo. Yo. Mystical 97 with two months. We got Luke Anton with 23 months. Mom, plug the router back in. Mom, get off the phone. I'm trying to play That's... Roblox. <laughs> Age Monarch uh, with 14 months. Hey, Will and Bob. Just got here from the Foo Fighter stream. Hope the Nintendo Indie Showcase has you in the festive mood. What What did they do? What did the Foo Fighters do? Did they play more music off the new album where that doesn't sound good? <laughs> you didn't like their SNL performance. No, like that was... That, they did, like they played songs off the new album and they were bad. I mean, and I've, I've stuck with the Foo Fighters through a lot. <laughs> I haven't listened to any of their new stuff. I like the last Sonic album. High- Sonic Highways was good. People were like, oh, it's just a documentary. But yeah, it was a good documentary. And they had good songs for it. I like when they do these uh, live streams of them playing in a studio. Those are cool. Yeah. Is that what they were doing? Because I'll watch that. I'll watch that later. Uh, Mark Hoppus was streaming Fall Guys earlier today on Twitch. Really? I was watching a little bit of that. I don't... I only know that one time he streamed The Last of Us, and when he picked up the guitar, he played Damn It. <laughs> oh, no. Kirby Air Ride 2. <laughs> he forgot the lyrics halfway through, but he picked it up again. <laughs> M. Kraus with two months, Kirby Air Ride 2. Why? Why are we saying that? I don't know. I mean, maybe he's hoping it comes. <laughs> Also, uh, Thomas Middleditch has been streaming on Twitch like a lot. And he streamed last night with uh, Ben Schwartz and Amir from Jake and Amir. And yeah. They were, just play, I, they were just playing VR golf. I got to fuck. It keeps coming up in my suggestion uh, feed on YouTube. It's like Ben Schwartz keeps interrupting Tom Middleditch while he's trying to play like Fortnite or something. I watched a little bit of that and it wasn't very yeah. good. But the, his stream was pretty good. Right. It's, the the three of them together was very funny. Also, uh, I haven't seen their Netflix special. You have to see the Netflix special. I've seen special. parts it's of it, hysterical. but I haven't seen the whole thing. It's so funny. It I've, was I've, so freaking funny. I've heard nothing but great things about it. Yeah. Um, uh, Age Monarch says, the Foo Fighters' new album is iffy. They played a lot of older stuff and Run Run Rudolph. Uh, it's on Amazon Music. It was an Amazon Music stream on Twitch. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, all right. More news. Yes. Uh, we uh, got, f- finally... Five more-, more titles are coming to SNES and NES Nintendo Switch Online collections on December 18th. So, very oh, Friday. Yeah. You got four SNES games and one NES game. Are you ready? Ooh, I'm ready. We got So, for the Super Nintendo, we got Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble. Ooh. This is a controversial one in the Donkey Kong Country trilogy. <laughs> Why? Because you either hate it or you like it. Okay. Like there's there's no like it's not the best Donkey Kong Country game, apparently. Um, it's, is, it's, is it like Back to the Future like, 3? I guess, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Like, people always, like, they either, like, like it or they just, they wish it never existed. <laughs> okay. There's, no, there's like, nobody thinks this game is great. Why? Do you just play as Dixie Kong? Are you play as Dixie Kong and somebody, and somebody else. <laughs> somebody else. We don't know who it is. Yeah. I I don't I don't know, dude. I don't play. I've never played the Donkey Kong. I never played past Donkey Kong Country One. Anyway, aside from that, there's the Ignition Factor, which is a firefighter simulator. Kitty Kong. That's okay. Dixie Kong and Kitty Kong. I've never seen Kitty. Oh, I've seen Kitty Kong. I've seen the cartoon yeah. before. 
<laughs> all right, sorry. It's all right. The ignition factor, uh, super valus four, and tough enough. Tough enough. The cover art for that looks like All Might from uh, My Hero. Now I gotta Google that. Tough enough and SNES. Oh yeah, it is SNES. SNES. Oh yeah, no, it does look like it looks like freaking All Might. Is that a Jim Lee drawing? Uh, I mean, it's that era for sure. Yeah, I don't know if it's him. I mean, it's the not Japanese one of his best. Cover... If it is, <laughs> no, the Japanese cover is substantially different. What's the Japanese cover? Is it the Dead Super Dance? Fam? No. Yeah, Dead Dance. Oh, it is. Oh, wow, that's, that's the way cooler. Yeah. yeah. Do that one. Uh, just tell me. Decided to use their own box art. <laughs> Jalico USA decided to use their own box art instead uh, for the American release, which is often considered one of the worst designs for a video game art of all time. Because <laughs> it looks like the name of the game is Hey Punk, Are You Tough Enough? Yeah. Dead Dance might be a better name anyway. Yeah. Anyway, it's a fighting game. It's It looks not great. <laughs> yeah. Uh... And then on the NES, you get Nightshade. Uh, Apparently, like this is like a cult classic game. Yeah, I'm hearing Nightshade. people on Twitter were were very excited about Nightshade, which I've never when heard I'm, of before. When I'm watching, like I, it took me a minute because I've heard of this game before, but I think I've heard of the PC version, which looks a lot better than this. Mm -hmm. It's one of those like weird detective, like point and click adventure games that's like really involved. Like the footage they showed in the the trailer, you're tied to a chair and you have to try to escape. That's honestly impressive for an NES game to like do something like that. This is a game that I would have played on the NES and been like, "Next, where's my where's my Mario?" Yeah, this isn't fast enough. I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. But people say it's good. Uh, of this whole release, uh, I don't. I'm not excited about anything. I might play Ignition Factor for like two minutes. That's the Firefighter one. Yeah. Somebody in the chat mentioned Burning Rangers for the Sega Saturn as a firefighter game. I didn't know that was a firefighter game. Oh, uh, yeah. I think, I think that, that is, doesn't yeah. look like a firefighter game at all. It looks like a freaking Mech Warrior game, but that game looks sick. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not probably going to play any of these. It's not going to make me pop open my Switch Online app anytime soon. But there you it's go. Just, yeah, it's it's we're, we got a lot of weird games in these collections. Uh, December eighteenth. At least we're getting yeah. more stuff. At least they're, yes. they're they're padding the the Switch Online stuff. Uh, we got a thousand bits from Mister Fizz. Thank you so much. I don't have a message. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We'll anyway. Take Another big deal that happened at the Game Awards will. We yes. got uh, Sephiroth in Captain Longsword. <laughs> He's got such a long sword. So we talked. I uploaded a reaction to the Wolf Den Clips channel. If you'd like to see an in-depth analysis and a reaction, a reaction of the trailer and an analysis of the trailer with AJ, go over to mm -hmm. the Wolf Den Clips channel. Um, for now, I guess we'll just talk about what this article has to say. Yes. We're getting Sephiroth. It was a big deal that they showed at the Game Awards. Yes. Uh, Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII is coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Nintendo announced the newest character for the Switch fighting game on Thursday at the Game Awards with a new trailer. He joins Cloud in representing the Final Fantasy franchise in Smash Bros. this December. Sephiroth for Smash Bros. Ultimate will follow Steve and Alex and Enderman and Zombie Steve! from Minecraft. Steve! <laughs> who was released in October, and Min Min from ARMS, Min who was Min. added to the game in June. Um, Smash Brothers Ultimate's next fighter will be the third included in the Fighter Pass Volume 2. All six characters in the in the past, plus new stages and music, will be released for Ultimate uh, by December 31st, 2021, uh, Sakurai said in a Nintendo Direct Mini presentation in January. 
The first fighters past added Joker from Persona 5, Hero from Dragon Quest, Banjo-Kazooie, Terry from Fatal Fury, and Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, Smash Brothers was released in December 2018. It's one of the best-selling games on Nintendo's system. Yeah, we always say it's the best-selling fighting game uh, yeah. of all time. We never say it's one of the best-selling Switch games. Or one well, of the best-selling like Nintendo games, period. I feel like that should kind of be obvious at this point. Yeah. Uh, Sardi in the chat says, is he saying Sephiroth or a Sephiroth? I'm saying Sudoku. <laughs> um, so, hey, I'm playing the trailer right now. Um, the first glaring thing you see is that his sword is massive. And I mean, yes. it, that's his thing. But it's <laughs> people are mad that we're getting another sword fighter. Which, I mean, like, I'm not so worried about that. I'm more concerned about his reach, which that's yeah. when people say they're mad about having a sword fighter, they really mean, oh, great, another character who can reach across the whole freaking stage. <laughs> um, and he has a crazy reach. It, it looks yeah. like the sword gets bigger when he slashes. It's crazy. It might. I mean, he was able to stab Mario through the heart from across the stage. Well, that's that was another thing. It's, it's like, yeah. He's like hanging from this little overall, and Did then you I see s- what somebody what? somebody t- retweeted that image, but it's Sonic grinding on the no, sword. I didn't see that one. <laughs> I'll I've see if like I can... all of them. <laughs> I, 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 I loved all the, I loved all those memes, all all the yeah. Sephiroth memes. Um, but somebody broke it down how right here in the trailer, uh, it looks like he stabbed Mario, and then you find out he's just caught on his overall. And yeah. then Cloud comes in and clashes with Sephiroth. And then two shots go by, three shots go by, and then Mario gets flung off of the sword. <laughs> so while Cloud is sword fighting with Sephiroth, Mario is still on the sword. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in the keep uh, right under the, the article. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can grab that. Yeah. Uh, boop, boop. Oh my god! And I like, I like how it's uh, rolling around at the speed of sound intensifies. I uh, my top banner is Mario stabbing Sephiroth. <laughs> so maybe I have to change it to that. Now. <laughs> um. Anyway, I hope he's really slow. I suspect he will be. He might feel like Byleth. Byleth has a really long range, maybe. and he's also super slow. So. I actually kind of like bi- playing as Byleth. I don't like playing as anybody except Captain Falcon, right? And a little and a little bit of Byleth. So maybe I might actually like playing as this guy. I'm surprised that they uh, Sephiroth is the next character to be included. Not because it's a Final Fantasy character, but it's a, another Final Fantasy VII character. A game that need I remind the class uh, from history was the game that soured Nintendo's relationship with Square for an entire console generation. (laughs) (laughs) And Uh, plus, you know, the Final Fantasy saga is like 15 games deep. They could have picked any other character from any of those games, and yet they still went with a character from 7. I mean, he's super iconic, you know? He's probably the most iconic Final Fantasy villain. True. Um, Nobody expected this. No. Everybody was thinking of all these different people it could be and nobody i didn't hear a single person say sephiroth um but it's cool i think he's really cool he's a he's a cool yeah. character to include um he looks like he's gonna have some sort of uh limit mechanic or or something that makes him turn into the one winged thing like give him the, the one wing, wing. The, the one winged angel yeah and and that will be uh like a timed thing like, like joker's thing like joker's yeah uh, persona when the persona shows up um so something that'll make him more bullshit (laughs) than having a really long sword um i knew i I, every time i say it's like limit people give me shit because it's it's not like limit it's like the persona thing it's different because the limit uh doesn't go away the limit goes away whatever um Nerds, all of you. Nerds. Every, oh, that's another thing. When we put up the uh, 
the clip of us reacting to it, everybody was mad yeah. that AJ called it weeb shit. And I was like, well, yeah. Because I said, I said, <laughs> it's going to be weeb shit because the last one was Western shit with, with uh, yeah. Minecraft Steve. So they got to do, do a weeb one now. And they did. Uh, I don't, I don't so, think people realize that. Uh, never mind, so here's something bother. that I just learned. I don't need to defend myself calling things weeb shit. I just, I quickly just looked up Sephiroth's wiki page for Sephiroth. You know, Seth, Sephiroth. Like an F. Sephiroth. Sephiroth. He has been voiced by, apparently, he's been voiced by many different actors in the United States, um, including Lance Bass of NSYNC. Whoa. Remember that? When uh, the first, the first Kingdom Hearts, that I knew, that I actually knew. What do you think of that? Uh, Freaking Jackson, yeah, <laughs> idiot. And, and apparently he's also been voiced by George Newbern and Tyler H Hooklin, which I can never pronounce this guy's last name. Who are those people? George Newbern played Superman in Justice League, the cartoon. Oh. And Tyler Hooklin played Superman on the Supergirl TV show and is currently getting his own Superman show. Why so did... Sep Why? Sephiroth has been voiced by two Superman actors. The One of the greatest villains in, in Eastern culture is was voiced by two of the best actors of the greatest hero of Western culture. That's freaking weird. That that's that that interest shit like that interests me that is weird if it's one of them voicing him in final in uh smash brothers then i might actually get the stupid fighter pass uh he also has a bunch of outfits uh two of them are shirtless of course so more weeb shit <laughs> <laughs> i think he, i think he might i think i might actually like playing as him um but we'll, and uh, probably the most surprising is it's coming out this month. Yes. So we're already halfway through the month. So it's going to any minute now we're going to see Sephiroth and Smash. Well, don't they usually announce like the character and then he comes out like really soon? Uh, because like, didn't I, Steve no. come out like immediately? I don't know about that. Uh, yeah. I think it usually takes like a month for them to. I mean, in the beginning when they were announcing them, they would take like a whole month for them to actually release. Yeah, them. yeah. Um. All right. We also we got more news. Yes. AJ says Steve was the week after the reveal. There you go. Uh, more news. This is news to me, Will. And it's all right, be, I'll sit this back. Is, this is going to be a big deal. All right. Mark my words. All right. Ross. Ross O'Donovan, Rubber Ninja. Ross from Game Grumps fame, from Newgrounds fame. Okay. Uh, he finished his Super... Uh, he finished his Mario Maker 2 world. It's called Super Rubber Ross. He makes really hard Mario Maker levels. They're not Kaizo mm -hmm. level hard, though. They're, like, reasonably hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is so why... He's like like he's like actually playing the game like you're supposed to. Right? Yes, you don't need to break the game in order to beat his levels. You have to beat it okay. the right way. It's just really hard to to do it. Like you don't need to learn special techniques in order to beat his levels. With Kaizo levels, you need to learn shell jumps and all this wacky right. stuff. But with his levels, you just need to have a basic understanding of Mario and a lot of time and a lot of patience. Um his levels are really hard. He makes these basically four game grumps to make them mad while they're playing it. Uh right uh tomorrow december 16th that is when he's releasing his world uh unleashing it on all of us uh he's he tweeted eight months work eight worlds 40 levels so he like legit made a mario maker like a mario world uh made a game yeah game he made a full game basically yeah built to annoy the shit out of your favorite creators coming to super mario maker 2 on december 16th tag those who you wish to give despair i will be playing this so stop tagging me. <laughs> um, he tweeted more stuff. He tweeted a lot of stats and like weird stuff. Um, this is going to bring a lot of people back to Mario Maker 2. This is like basically, uh, this is basically a random dude just made DLC 
for a Nintendo yeah. game. And it's going it, to, people are going to buy the game for this and people are going to come back to Mario Maker after, you know, being inactive for a while just to yeah. play this game. Uh, so that should be a big deal to everybody. I don't recommend these levels for everybody. I recommend <laughs> you give it a shot, maybe, if you have Mario Maker. Uh, it's going to be very hard. I can't find his yeah. tweets that he tweeted. I, I imagine this is not going to be for the faint of heart. Like you, you have to basically be able to play Mario blind in order to get through some of these. It's sh- it's just time. You need to have a basic understanding of Mario, and you have to have a lot of patience. Yeah. Uh, he had stats up. I can't find them now for some reason. Uh, oh, look at that! We crashed again. Yay! I I made it within the time. We're here. We're just taking a snack break. Here. Uh, we did it. All right. I don't know what's up with Twitch tonight. It did it uh, again. <laughs> Come on. No, stay up. That's what she said. Oh, that's for the podcast listeners. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Come back, baby. Hey, All right. we're back. All right. All right. And we did it. We didn't lose the VOD again. All right. Sweet. Uh, Beetle Wind says, "Not gonna lie, Wolf Bros are com- comedy geniuses." Um, he's right. You got us. Um, all those crashes were really just um comedy installations. We were <laughs> testing your patience because we think it's funny. We are we are just like Andy Kaufman. Um, just like it's him. all part of the act. And it's gonna keep it's gonna keep happening. So there you go. It's all intentional. Oh, here I could have just clicked on the pictures the whole time. Um. <laughs> All right, so Ross said Super Rubber Ross World for Mario Maker 2 comes out on the 16th. Thought I'd share some interesting statistics about the making of it. A spread, a thread. A thread, not a spread. I'm hungry. Uh, All levels need to be uploaded without the assistance of checkpoints. So when you upload a level to Mario Maker, you can't use a checkpoint. You have to beat it straight through. So that means it's even harder for him to upload a level. Um, the last level of the world accounted for 18.9% of all deaths experienced in the upload process. So the last world is the hardest world, obviously. Uh, yeah, here's a pie chart. He doesn't say what, which, which one's what world, but, uh, yeah, looks like take a bow, sir, which is probably the last level took up everything. Um, According to my numbers guy, who's Endslayer366, the longest level to upload was a World 8 level called the Monster Cage. It took 7 hours, 28 minutes, and 28 seconds to upload. This is uh, total minutes. (laughs) It took 449 minutes to do uh, Monster Cage. So... I feel like if you have like pie charts and graphs and stats and all this, you, you know you're in for like some serious, like high high end stuff, like this, professional level. This is why courses. I don't make Mario Maker levels. <laughs> I made one, and that took right. me forever. So I refuse to make any more because I would have to spend that much time on all of them, and I do not have that. The time taken to upload World 8 alone was 22 hours, 24 minutes, and 7 seconds. Jesus. Here they they all are. So the first one only took them an hour. Well, first one's usually, like, you know, relatively easy compared to the rest of the game. It looks like the first, third, and seventh worlds are easy. Mm -hmm. Only an hour each. And then the eighth one is skyrockets 22 hours. Yeah. Uh, took over 3,000 dead Marios to upload the world. Out of 40, out of the 40 levels, only five were beaten on the first try. Oh, okay. Mm. okay. So that means you can beat some on the first try. Yeah. Uh, and then he has some like clips of him like rage quitting on some of them. And some of them are really, are very funny. So if you're still into Mario Maker, give this a shot. It's going to be very good. Uh, finally, some new content right. to Mario Maker. I mean, I've been playing the ninja speed runs and stuff every once in a while, but I haven't been playing the multiplayer like I used to. Right. Did they ever fix the multiplayer? No. 
which is why I can't right. recommend it to ever, anybody to play because it's broken. Right. And I'm only I'm only my sick ass was able to uh, <laughs> put up with that. All right, so give that a try when it comes out Wednesday very soon. Uh, let's talk about Cyberpunk. Yay! Oh boy! Oh boy! Game this came out. A... I played three hours of it, but in total game time, it was only two hours because I guess I spent a long okay. time making my character and staring at his balls. Yeah. Um, I feel like I didn't do enough to say whether or not I I was enjoying my time. I've been thinking about it a lot. I've been wanting to get back into it, but I just yeah. Haven't. Um, I got up to act the start of Act Two, which I. Did you get up to Act Two yet? Nope. I don't. I don't think I did. I didn't. All I. I got, uh, the last thing I did was, the guy with the glasses put some, like upgrade chip in my brain. Okay. Did you play the Johnny Silverhand interlude? No, I didn't touch Keanu Reeves at all. All right. So like you're. Oh wait, no. Maybe you're not. I'm very so early I'm, in the game. Okay. So I'm. Yeah. So I'm Act. Act Two is. Let's start of Act Two is when you. Johnny Silverhand finally comes into play. So I'm okay. I'm up there. Apparently Act 2 is super long, so I'm nowhere close to finishing this game. Um, it, I'm playing it on an Xbox One S. Oof. Which everybody is telling you not to do. And they're not necessarily wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the, the biggest issue for me is that a lot of times controls are unresponsive. Ooh, that's, that's a... Um, that's a death sentence. A lot, a lot of people like aren't necessarily mentioning that specifically, but for me, like I'll try to crouch and my guy doesn't crouch. I'll try switching weapons and he doesn't switch weapons. Uh, I don't feel like my shots are getting uh, are hitting their target or even firing necessarily. I'm experiencing a lot of like the other stuff people are running into, like uh, character models or like N64 level um, guns aren't loading when when you pull them out to use um that's that's unacceptable the the big the biggest problem that i've noticed is that the game will freeze while i'm driving oh and it will take like several seconds to unfreeze i to the point where i think the game I, f- I fear the game hard locks my system. It hasn't yet, but I know like that's something that has happened to other people. Has the game ever crashed on you? N- uh, no. The closest it's ever come to crash was when I was running it through a HDMI switcher, but that's my fault because I forgot the Xbox One doesn't play nice with HDMI switchers. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Um, I've been so a lot of people are having problems with the previous gen systems or or yeah. Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Those versions yes. of the game are apparently not optimized. I've been playing on the Xbox One X. No, that's not true. The series. I've been playing on the Xbox Series X and it had I've seen some visual glitches, but yeah. for the most part it's run just fine. I haven't had anything that's impeded my gameplay. There was one scary part where I thought I glitched out of a mission like in the tutorial, I did. I went a step ahead by accident, mm-hmm. and I thought I soft locked myself, but uh, then the I was able to fix it, and it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. Um, there were some visual stuff, like I saw characters just fly through the sky out of nowhere. Yeah. And, like, it was funny. I saw uh, there's a glitch. There's a known glitch where uh, you look in the mirror and you're just nude, and you're and you don't have your genitalia that you picked. Um, you're just a Ken doll down there. Yeah. So that happened, but uh, otherwise, it was actually a very smooth experience for me. I would say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, for me, it was uh very rough. <laughs> uh, frame rate is wildly inconsistent. Love the podcast. Um, you guys are awesome. I have to keep muting that every time I restart. Over thank, th- thank you, robot. Um, frame rate is wildly inconsistent. Uh, I I'm enjoying parts of it despite all these issues. But I, I do understand why people are saying wait for the patches and for the game to finally be optimized for Xbox One and PlayStation 4 because it's rough. It's, it's, not, it's not easy to get through. And this is on top of like all the other RPG shit 
that I normally don't like in these games <laughs> um, that I'm, I'm willing to I'm willing to put aside and actually work through it just because I think the world and the, the concept and the genre of cyberpunk is very interesting. I put all this aside for Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, basically the same game. Yeah. You uh, know, so a, people, a cyberpunk stealth RPG with action elements. While I was playing it, people said, you've obviously never played Deus Ex before. Yeah. Um, this is interesting because the game was developed for last gen. It was developed for PS4 and uh, Xbox so, One. But the timeline of events is the, the very first trailer they showed of Cyberpunk, the announced trailer, where it was just that woman with the spider arms, mm -hmm. that came out in 2013, months before the Xbox One and the PS4 were released. And, and I think in some cases before they were even announced. So, and then we finally got the, the Keanu Reeves trailer, like, two years ago and that debuted on the xbox stage at e3 mm -hmm. and that was the first time we had seen it since the the spider girl trailer i keep calling it the spider girl trailer because she looks like a spider in that trailer um but at no point in the development or in the news or whatnot did they indicate that it was going to be available for anything other than xbox one P ps4 or pc but that's the thing it's not. <laughs> it's you're playing the PS4 and Xbox One versions just on the Series X or the PlayStation 5. Right. You're not playing a next gen version of the game. I don't even think it's optimized for the Xbox Series X. It doesn't have the optimized icon there. It's not optim it's not optimized for any system. Period. That's true. Um, but my, my point is, I think you just played the 4k version of it. I think that's right. really it. My point is a lot of, cause I, people were saying that like, Oh, you're playing on the wrong system. Obviously this is a next gen game. Obviously this is a PC game. Oh, fuck you dude. <laughs> it, like at no point did they ever say that this was always advertised as a PS4 game an Xbox one game and a PC game. I'll, t I'll take but that a step. Should... I'll take that a step further. It is just not a Series X or PlayStation Five game. It is an Xbox One and a PS4 game. You cannot yes. buy it for the Series X or PlayStation Five. You are just playing the PS4 or Xbox One versions on yeah. your PS5 or so Series you X. Fact, you would expect those versions to at least function at a better level than they are currently functioning at. You know, console gamers gener generally accept the fact that their games are not going to, you know, look or run as well as the PC version, especially if you're running like a, a $7,000 machine. We get that, but we at least expect some sort of consistency. And this game just doesn't really have that consistency that we're looking for. It's reminding me of Crisis. Not that Crisis ran bad. Crisis ran fine. It was just that uh, it re it required a lot of system resources in order to run yeah. well. Uh, and it looks like Cyberpunk is the same, except it's yeah. uh, maybe even not running well at its most optimized. Uh, yeah. People are still having problems on uh, higher-end PCs. But um, yeah. like I said, my experience on Series X... Uh, wasn't bad like i just had some yeah. minor visual glitches for someone willing to brush off you on previous gen sounds like it's unplayable at times it's see i don't want to necessarily say unplayable but it's well i guess if it's locking up while i'm driving yeah that's unplayable but it, it's and if the very input is delayed that that's a pro that's a major problem that's that is a ma yeah that is a major problem so uh, the reason we're talking about this even is because Cyberpunk uh, released a statement. I'm not reading the whole statement. It's another scary right. yellow statement with Ricky <laughs> Berwick in the corner and licking the screen. Um, yeah. Elon Musk tweeted about it. Th this doesn't surprise me. He's a lunatic. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, CD Projekt Red said people are having problems on previous gen consoles. Uh, they're sorry about it. Uh, and they will, they're going to have a patch in January and a patch in February. So they're going to give their developers a break because right. of the holidays. Uh, and 
there will be uh, refunds. You can get a refund if you want. According to them. But they, said, they, they said, please don't. Please give us a chance. We will have patches. But if you really, really, really want, we'll, uh, we'll give you a refund. So, uh, I mean, I I played fine. Uh, you're going to keep playing it, so I'd assume you don't want I'm going to keep playing. I, I might take a break and wait for the patches. Like, I might go play something else in the meantime. Just because I don't know if I can keep playing a game that, you know, locks up when I'm driving or, you know, won't let me crouch or <laughs> things like that. Uh, um, another thing that I feel like I have to say when we're talking about how this game should have been they should have known that it's not going to be optimized for previous gen because it was developed for previous gen. Uh, yeah. We're leaving out that during the uh, reviews, reviewers weren't able to take screenshots using their own capture cards. Reviewers were only allowed to review the PC version and they weren't allowed to, you know, like you said, capture that footage until after street date. Mm-hmm. So it's basically, yeah, CD Projekt Red knew that the the previous gen version of the game was very rough. Yeah, they never showed anything but the PC version. They only ever showed yeah. the PC version in any of the previews and stuff. So mm-hmm. uh, they, it looks, it seems like they were hiding something. Yeah, and going back to you know them saying that if you don't want the game, get a refund. That's not entirely accurate. <laughs> uh, per the purge, CD Projekt Red uh, has confirmed it has it has no special refund agreement with Microsoft or Sony, despite saying dissatisfied players should return their copies of the game in a statement. It means players are covered by both platforms' standard refund policies, which, in the case of Sony, explicitly prohibits refunds if you've already started playing a game unless the content is faulty. The confirmation comes after the company's senior vice president of business development, Michael Nowakowski, uh, on an investor's call held on Monday evening, uh, said Microsoft and Sony have refund policies for every product that is released digitally on their storefronts. Despite several articles, I've seen that things are being set up uh, just for us. It's actually not true. These policies are in place and have always been there. They're not offered uh, specifically for us. Anyone who has purchased any title on the Microsoft uh, storefront or the PlayStation Network can ask for a refund. And if it's made within certain boundaries, unless related to time, usage, and so on, they can ask for a refund. So basically, he's saying that, yes, you can ask for a refund, but you're at the mercy of Microsoft and Sony. It, 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 but it sounds like CD Projekt Red will give you a refund. That's what their statement says. Yeah. They say but contact us. Well, as we'll a contact your retailer resort. first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like Walmart will give you a refund. They don't care about anything. Yeah. That's why they're saying that, because they'd rather Walmart give you the refund than them do yeah. it. Uh yeah. For box versions, please first try to get a refund at the store where you bought the game. Should this yeah. not be possible, please contact us. So they're trying, you know? Yeah. So uh sony's official refund rules state if you have started to download or stream the purchased content you will not be eligible for a refund unless the content is faulty so not even playing the game once you down start downloading it that's it what's your sol is that cd project red talking or is that a specific store talking that's that's the official uh, Sony rules for downloading game for getting a refund of a game you bought on the PlayStation Network. Right. Oh, for once the you digital st- one. Once you start downloading it to your PS4, that's it. For copies purchased digitally, please use the refund system on PSN or Xbox, respectively. Oh, so there's so there that's wrong. Then you can't get a yeah. refund on PlayStation or Microsoft. Right. Microsoft, and I've done this. I have returned games through Microsoft. Uh, you have a 14-day window after purchase in which a customer may be eligible for a refund. Uh, Microsoft spokesperson said, we provide digital game product refunds as part of, of a consistent and reliable buying experience. Uh, for more details, please visit the Xbox support page. Basically, 
uh, you have 14 days after you buy the game and even download the game to get a refund. I'll say uh, at least, I mean, S- Sony won't give you a refund unless it's faulty, but it is. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. faulty. <laughs> On PlayStation 4, it's faulty. So I feel like that's a good case for a refund. Like if, if yeah. my inputs aren't working and if the game's crashing every five seconds, give me a refund. You know? Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, I, I you know they there was an investor call the other day too, and it was just up on the internet. It was an hour long with a CD yeah. Project Red and their investors, and I listened to like ten to fifteen minutes of it. Um, they were it was all PR nonsense. The the investors were basically like, oh, I heard you're getting uh refunds. How much has that affected you? And they're like, it hasn't affected us much. Uh, people we're asking people to yeah. wait for the patch. So what's the CD Projekt Red admits it ignored the signals? Uh, amid widespread reports of major technical gameplay problems on PS4 and Xbox One, uh, CD Projekt Red is acknowledging that it took the wrong approach in development leading up to its release. You think? Uh, per uh, CD Projekt Red CEO Adam... Polish last name. Uh, <laughs> after three delays, we as the management board were too focused on releasing the game. Um, as you said, during a conference, a recent conference call addressing the issues, that's probably the same call you were talking about. We underestimated the scale and complexity of the issues. We ignored the signals about the need uh, for additional time to refine the game on the base last gen consoles. This caused the loss of gamers trust and the reputation that we've built been building through the better big part of our lives. Uh, how, how did such a marquee title end up? Uh, released in such a state a large part of the problem was um us look this is of uh, michael noaskowski talking us looking at the pc and next gen performance rather than the current gen consoles we definitely did not spend enough time looking at that the covid19 pandemic also impacted the usual testing plans for the title external testers working on external company working for external companies were not able to test the game from home um they have well, test centers they have test centers, and if they're not there, they're not able to work. Uh, though the console version was not shown widely before the game's release, CDPR co-founder and board joint CEO Marcin Iwinski set, uh, said that was simply because we were updating the game on last-gen consoles until the very last minute, and we thought we'd make it in time. Unfortunately, this resulted in giving it to reviewers just one day before the release, which was definitely too late, and the media didn't get the chance to review it properly that was not intended we were just fixing the game until the very last moment yeah it's because they yeah it wasn't ready <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh like, yeah we know that <laughs> yeah noah kowski didn't said he didn't blame sony and microsoft for approving the game in its current state this was definitely on our side i can only assume that they trusted that we were going to fix things upon release and that obviously did not come together exactly as we planned yeah, that's another thing. Cause like Sony and Microsoft, like you have to get your games approved by them before they get released on their systems. That's what certification is all about. And a lot of the things that people are seeing in Cyberpunk shouldn't have passed certification. <laughs> but imagine you have a big company like CD Projekt Red releasing a game, mm-hmm. and you're the guy who has to be like, ah. No, you can't release it, man. You gotta, yeah. you gotta hold on to it for a little long. Imagine you're the guy. Like, imagine PlayStation denies certification for PS4 and Microsoft doesn't. Yeah, people are gonna be like, "What's Sony? What the hell? This is gonna be a huge problem." Well, for people Sony. at first, be, well, at first it'd be for Sony. Then when they realize the game is buggy and broken, right. it's gonna be a problem for Microsoft. Right, right. But now it's so. just a problem for CD Projekt Red. It's not yes. a problem for either console necessarily. It's the problem. Yeah. Their ta- CD Projekt Red is taking all of the blame. Which um, they rightfully should. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of memes online that are like, uh, everybody's mad that CD Projekt kept delaying the game. But then when they finally released it, everybody's mad that they released it. And that's <laughs> nobody's, nobody's thinking that. Yeah. Nobody's like that. It, 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 there was clearly management issues. They clearly had yeah, this problems. Was very mismanaged. Look at Super Meat Boy Forever. Yeah, they 
they took the release date off because they were like we don't want to get your hopes up it's done when it's done um but this shouldn't have even gotten to that point one of the yeah. questions uh that was asked during the investor call was uh would you have been able to uh get this out without all of the bugs if you had more developers and they said no we can't just throw a bunch of developers at it um the problem was they they should have done that two years ago you know yeah they should have done things to fix this way in advance uh and they didn't and now we have this yeah again i'll say my experience wasn't that bad but uh if you have a ps4 or an xbox one especially an early version of those consoles you're yeah. probably gonna have a really really hard time with this game i i, I to, to give them the benefit of the doubt i have no doubt that they're going to like do everything they can to fix this mm -hmm. because you know cd project red like they worked on the witcher 3 their last game for years you know, refining post release, refining it and optimizing it to make it the best possible game that it is now. Um, so, I know I, I know that they'll do the same thing with Cyberpunk. I don't think Cyberpunk, at least on Xbox One and PS4, is beyond fix. You know, be, being fixable. I just feel like, you know, if you were thinking about getting the game, definitely wait unless you're going to play it on PC. Or a next gen system, or apparently it's great on Stadia. That's what Sorry just brought that up uh, in the chat. Yeah, yeah, I heard it runs great on Stadia, and I'm not surprised. I mean, Stadia should be the best gaming PC you can get, just streamed yeah. to your to your crappy computer. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all. But that uh, so. play it on that. Also, if yeah. you buy it on Stadia, you get the controller for free and Stadia Pro or whatever for free. <laughs> yeah. so and a Chromecast Ultra. So they're just giving you everything if you just buy it on Stadia. So if you don't have a console yeah. and you really want to play Cyberpunk, that's not a bad way to play it. <laughs> you can play it right on Chrome on wherever you want. There you go. Um, but yeah, it's it. I mean, COVID was a problem for everybody. It made yes. delays for everybody but uh this was supposed to come out before covid or like in the very beginning of covid <laughs> so um i'm sure that didn't help i'm sure it made things worse but uh there were already problems with the development of this and everybody loves cd project red because of the witcher 3 and stuff and they used to be a small yeah. little company and now they're huge yeah um yeah now i mean we'll see what happens with their next game we'll see if people <laughs> uh look at them differently or are or, or are skeptical oh of they'll definitely look at, look at them definitely i mean i i forgot where i saw it but there was like a list of developers that used to be like you know loved by the fans could do no wrong and all it takes is one game like you look at bethesda uh skyrim fallout uh all the the id uh games like they can do no wrong fallout 76 fuck bethesda bethesda <laughs> yeah. is the worst but everybody knew that bethesda games were buggy Nobody right. said CD Projekt Red games were buggy. Well, buggy, but not broken. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Yes. Because, you know, because uh, like Red Dead Redemption 1 was buggy, but it wasn't broken. It was completely playable. There were just bugs that would pop up here and there. And that was the same thing with pretty much Sky, you know, games like Skyrim and Fallout and things like that. But Fallout 76 was broken and you know just not a very fun experience overall and that like turned people really quickly yes uh we got uh what do we got we got pika pika for three months love the podcast you guys are awesome thank you pika pika we got thank frosty you. nacho with 26 months yo it's bob and will pog champ hello well do, do you know what pog means you know what poggers means oh uh not that spelling <laughs> poggers no yeah no I, I don't know that but you know what pog champ means uh yes yeah, whoever is like the champion of the game pogs <laughs> no <laughs> you know what pog means p-a-w-g p-o-g pog my accent you know my accent no i don't know it's a twitch thing it's 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 that emote pog champ 
It's just the guy go with his mouth open, go oh, oh. oh. like oh I, shit. I only go on Twitch when we do this. I'm just, I'm just look, s- 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 saladite. You gave a little pog champ. So that's like oh, oh poggers, dude. Like oh, that's poggers. Thank you. That's what that. That's uh, anyway. Uh, pog p a w g is fat ass white girl. That I know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's like that. It's- but not at I am, all. <laughs> I am hip to a point. Will is the pog champ. That's that's <laughs> fat ass wacko. Yeah. Tan man slim. Thank you for the Twitch Prime subscription. Uh, we will blast through these last three stories. Yeah. Surprise! Funimation's coming to the Switch. We're getting oh, a oh. streaming app to the Switch. Another one. Yeah. It's not Netflix. It's Funimation. Which is strange. Cool. Uh, we're not getting Crunchyroll, which was just bought by no. Sony. That's more news for you. But doesn't Crunchyroll was bought by Sony? Doesn't Funimation isn't Funimation also owned by Sony? I think so. Because that was the that was the big thing. Because like Sony already owns an anime streaming service, and now they own the other one. I think that you're right. Yeah. Anyway, I, I canceled my Funimation subscription. I moved to Crunchyroll. So, but I think you could watch stuff on Funimation for free. It just has ads in it. Yeah. Um, it is out right now. I downloaded it. I was going to boot it up and show everybody what it looks like, but we don't have time for that anymore. Okay. Um, so, I think Sony are rolling Crunchyroll into Funimation. They should do it the other way around because Crunchyroll is well-optimized and mm. Funimation is not necessarily well optimized. Um, so, I mean, I'll try this out. This this sounds yeah. like a like a good thing. But I'd rather it be Crunchyroll. They should just do Crunchyroll. Maybe is that- there what's like the aside from content? What's like the major differences between the two? Uh, it's uh, the player is better on Crunchyroll. That's really okay. Good. I've had glitches happen on on Funimation because when you think about it, like. You know, Netflix and Hulu, like, aside from content, they're basically the same thing. UI is different, but right. you know, they're basically the same thing. So I liked Funimation more because, like, uh, Neon Vexy says in the chat, Funimation does a lot of dubs. So I had Funimation for a while. Right. I think I had Crunchyroll, and then I switched to Funimation because they did dubs. And then I wanted uh, subs again, so I switched back to Crunchyroll. Um, so... AJ says Crunchyroll is more developed on the community end too. Crunchyroll has manga and stuff. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, you can just get manga and stuff. And I think that they have like forums and stuff like built into it. Um, so most, I mean, you know, weebs like Crunchyroll. <laughs> <laughs> but Funimation's got different stuff. So I, I'd imagine that they probably had this uh, developed already before, the, the, before they bought Crunchyroll. So this is probably in the works for a while. I'd imagine we'll get Crunchyroll pretty soon. Crunchyroll also made Verve. Yeah, Verve is another one. It like comes with Crunchyroll. That I yeah, I thought that got shut down a while ago. So that's what you know. That's what it was. I had Verve because it had the remember, dubs. Yeah, yeah. It had the dubs of My Hero Academia. Then I switched to Funimation because they got the dubs to My Hero. Then I switched back to Crunchyroll because I didn't want the dubs anymore. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Download Funimation right now. It's there on Switch. And I'm pretty sure you can just watch stuff for free, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Next up, look at that. Call of Duty Warzone's got an update today, uh, tonight at 2 a.m. Woo! So by the time you listen to this, it'll probably be there. Uh, this is the first major update in Warzone. Uh, there's a new map. We've been playing the same map, Verdon- Verdonsk. We've been playing that for almost a year. Uh, and now we're getting Rebirth Island, which looks smaller, but I don't think it is at all. I think it's probably the same size. Um, also, so there's 32 points of interest in this map. Mm-hmm. The biggest deal might be there are 30 base weapons being added to Warzone from Call of Duty Cold War. Wow. So it's going to be 30 new weapons. A big part of Call of Duty Warzone, Will, is getting a gun that you like and getting all the little customization attachments and like modifying it. It's like an RPG. Mm-hmm. It's like little RPG elements in your in your first-person shooter. 
Oh uh, man, you got this nerd shit in my macho manly game. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so now there's going to be a whole new meta game with all these 30 new guns. There's going to be all these, everybody's going to find out which gun's OP and that's the gun that everybody's going to use. So uh, right. it's going to be very fun and interesting to see what happens with Warzone within the next few hours. Uh, I would love to give, I would love to play. There's a lot of things I want to play today or tomorrow, Wednesday. There's a lot of things happening Wednesday <laughs> that I can't play because I got to work. There's, right. there's Mario Maker, there's this, Call of Duty, and there's Among Us on the Switch. And, and I see that the, our Among Us group chat is going nuts right now. And I told Wood I couldn't do it Wednesday or Thursday. And I bet you he's going to try to get them to do it on Wednesday or Thursday. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to fight an Australian man. Will I would pay money to see that? Uh, we'll do it. We'll do it like a uh, Jake and Logan Paul. There you go. Lastly, oh, does Will, that mean I, does that mean I got to box somebody too? Yeah, you have to. Who do you want to fight? You call someone out. Uh, scootish. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure I can take him. <laughs> you listen to me, Jackson. <laughs> Damn. All right. How much are we charging? Fifty dollars um, a ticket. All right. There you go. Mortal Kombat movie. What now? Uh so they've have we now have a release date for the brand new Mortal Kombat uh, live action movie that is coming uh, to theaters and HBO Max April sixteenth, twenty twenty one. Um, and here is the first image of it. Um, the dragon logo bothers me. This is new. This is a new. Is it a series or is it a is it a movie? It's a movie. It's a new movie. It's a it's a brand new Mortal Kombat movie. Oh, it's just no. called Mortal Kombat. Oh, um, no. yeah. Apparently, it's going to be rated R. Oh, good. So that's I mean, good. that's good. Um, it's here's the, the thing. That, yeah. Well, the, the original was PG-13, and that was actually really good. Mm -hmm. um, here, here's the thing about this, though. The the dragon logo, the iconic Mortal Kombat dragon logo, the version they're using for this movie is just different enough from the classic logo that it, it bothers me. Because Mortal Kombat has used the same dragon logo, the exact same dragon logo, since 1991 so this is they've the done one yeah so they've done slight modifications to it like they've released it in a gradient they've released it in gold for mortal Kombat uh 2011 they made it like 3d ish but the the overall silhouette is exactly the same mm -hmm. every single time for all the games for the the original live action movies for the animated series it's always the same they changed it for this and it's not bad, but it's just off enough. That <laughs> it looks like, a, looks like a knockoff. Yeah, exactly. Cause it's like this, at this point, the mortal Kombat logo is like the Nike swoosh. There are variants of it, but it uh, always looks the same. I don't know about that. <laughs> I've, I've, I'll go as far as to say it is. I mean, I think it looks fine. I mean, I get what you're saying though. It's different. It's, but it's not just that it's different. It's like it's because like, you know, the Batman logo changes with every movie. Mm -hmm. But this is trying to be the the Mortal Kombat dragon, but it's just off enough. It's one of those not... things where it's like the the people making the movie were like, we got to make this a movie. It's different from yeah. the game. We got to do we got to change things that they did wrong. Meanwhile, it's like uh, already. Yeah a billion dollar franchise and now they have to freaking uh they have to hollywoodize it they have to hollywoodize it because they think they, they think they oh, the, the hell of themselves mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I, I think that's a telltale sign that this is probably going to be not great will <laughs> maybe i mean look i'll i'll definitely watch especially if it's coming to hbo max because i'm like the only person who's not mad that movies are coming to hbo max day and date with theatrical release supposedly it's bad um, like the app is bad is that a thing? The app is... It's not designed very well. I mean, the player is fine. Um, it doesn't have a lot of content. I mean, it's got a lot of content, but it also, like... They didn't do a good job of, like, ironing out licensing issues. So things that Warner Brothers owns are not on their own streaming service. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be better. It could definitely be better. Um 
but mostly um, Hollywood is mad because AT&T made this decision, not Warner Brothers. AT&T was the, who owns Warner Brothers said, all right, enough of this. We, our numbers aren't good. Start putting all of your movies day and date on HBO Max, at least for a month. So the directors and the actors, like they're upset about it because they're losing out on like money and the theatrical experience. But like, I don't care. Good. I will gladly watch all this crap at home. It's we need uh, people outside of the movie industry to make those types of decisions. Yeah, I mean, AT and T is still an evil company, and I hope one day that right. they get burned to the ground, cyberpunk style. But at the same time, you know, I'm not against this. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, Mortal Kombat doesn't. I, I mean, I don't think it's going to be great. I'll wait for a trailer, but low expectations. Yeah. <laughs> Always have low expectations with video game movies. Oh, wow. Would you look at the time, Will? Oh, geez. Oh, it's. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! It's time for the tweet of the week, Will. All right. What do you got for me? It's from Mario. Oh! It's Mario. He's got Sephiroth's sword uh, coming at him. He's got uh, Ridley friggin' poking his hat. He's got uh, the villager with the net <laughs> on his face. And he's got uh, Minecraft Steve eating a piece of meat and look at him. <laughs> That's because he always gets the short end of the stick in yeah. all of the Smash Brothers trailers. He's always getting <laughs> beat up and stuff. And here he is. All around me are familiar yeah. faces. <laughs> All right. Fun time. Yes. Now, we'll talk to you people. That's right, folks. If you left a comment over on our YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the show. We will answer that question that you gave us. And, of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Uh, We got, from last week's Wolf Den Live, we got, Shilvio D. Linton, who says, Digimon Survive was supposed to release this year. The anime rebooted this year, too. The Digimon Adventure 2020. It's such a good franchise. Digimon Cyber Sleuth 2015 is several steps ahead of current gen 2019 Pokemon and has SMT, Shin, oh, Shin, Mugami, Shin Mugami Tensei and Persona vibes. Uh, I don't believe you. Yeah, that's sound, I believe that, that it's sound. good. I believe that it's good. But but Pokemon's good too, I'm hearing. Yeah. That all sounds like some weeb shit, Will. Yeah. Uh Melon says, Well, they're not gonna include the video gamey stuff in the Metal Gear Solid movie. It'll just be the the plot points and action. Colonel isn't going to tell Snake to press the action button or mailing to save the game. <laughs> It'll adapt the movie stuff, the story stuff. Do people really think a video game movie should have video gamey stuff like Psycho Mantis save file reading? No. Nobody no. thinks that it's going to be Th that's literally not... that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not the point. The point is like the experience of Metal Gear Solid is tied to the fact that it is a video game. That's what we're talking about here. So if you try to replicate that experience in a movie, it's or try to, you know, make a Metal Gear Solid movie and have it feel like a movie, it's gonna be a very sharp disconnect from what it was made to be. If you they know? if they do s something similar, it would just be fourth wall breaking stuff. Yeah, and they do it like once as like a nod. That's really yeah. Good. But I mean, like to his point. Mei Ling probably won't be in the movie at all because what would be her purpose then? Yes, yeah, her purpose is to save the game. <laughs> yeah, and she would just not be in the game. Well, in the second one, isn't she? Or who is? Is it Mei Ling in the second one? It's Rose. Yeah, she. Well, she's like a, yeah. an actual important character in the second one. Yeah. Well, yeah. So if they were to get to Metal Gear Solid Two, they'd have to completely rewrite Rose's character. Yeah, because. The only reason why she's an important character is because you have to talk to her all the time because you need to mm -hmm. save the game. And that's when she goes, are you feeling okay? Blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, shut up, Rose. I'm trying to do my mission. Yeah. She's like, why do you hate me? We're supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to be married. Yeah. Um, things like that is what Will is talking about. 
Yeah. Anyway, uh, James Seidler says that was a perfect explanation of the difference between Nintendo's level of petty versus the fans' level of petty. I'd I'd imagine Will did that, and not me. Yeah. <laughs> Seven. I don't even remember my explanation. I don't remember it either. Seven. I'm from South Africa too. Have been listening to the podcast and previously Wolfed in Live for about two years now. And I honestly don't care that it's 3 a.m. for me when you go live because I'm usually up studying until then anyway. Or if I'm not, it was always nice to catch it on Spotify the next day when I was commuting and a great a com- a, a company i'm having a stroke that's too many letters for me <laughs> to my coffee now that i'm working from home i appreciate that seven i appreciate you watching from all the way over there hopefully uh we don't impede on your study yeah people and if we do school is for losers anyway <laughs> people uh on my stream sometimes like oh i'm doing homework i got so much homework you're like oh i'm studying it's too much i always say well don't talk to me about that i can't relate with i had too much yeah. home if i had homework or if i had to study i just didn't yeah and then i did very bad in school mm-hmm. and i would get and look at, at look at him now well, look at me now still can't even read <laughs> um i lost will Oh, I lost Will. Anyway, the last one is Game and Life. Unpopular opinion, Melee is overrated. Uh, I don't think... Hi, Will. Hi. Uh, Uh, Sorry about that. The last one is Melee is overrated. I I, I caught that. I So... I think Melee is a really, really, really good game and is one of the best GameCube games. I think it's one of the best Smash Brothers games. I think that... uh, it might be the second best Smash Bros. game. <laughs> the best being Ultimate. I think Ultimate is yeah. the best Smash Bros. game. Um, Melee is great. Uh, overrated, I think, just when people are holding on to it for so long. Like, people right. hold on to it as the best Smash Bros. game. I think that that's when it could be considered overrated. But I, I think that it deserves a lot of the hype around it that it has. I think it deserves yeah. to be this like mo- momentous, this monumental game that it is. Like, you know, there is a place in, in history for games like Street Fighter 2. And I understand why there are still Street Fighter 2 tournaments. But I also don't begrudge people and tournament organizers from moving on to Street Fighter 5. Right. Because everything that was good about Street Fighter 2 is still in Street Fighter 5, but optimized and updated for the 21st century and ultimate is basically that for melee and i know somebody is gonna write you know oh no street fighter 5 is has all of this stuff and the hitboxes and two are much tighter and whatnot and you have to play the right version of street fighter 2 um but you get what i'm saying I, I think that there's room for Street Fighter 2 and and the newest Street Fighter. I also think there's right. room for Melee and the newest Smash Brothers. Right. You know? Um it, it's just it gets weird when people say like Melee is the only good Smash Brothers. I'm only playing Melee. It's like, "All right, you're overreacting." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can both be good. Um Anyway, now we're in the chat. How you doing, everybody? Hey, you doing? How's it going? hey everybody. Make it good. Make it good. I got to pee. <laughs> and I have a whole video to do after this. Uh, is it possible you and Greg might try the COD update tonight, says Spiral Girl? No, it is not possible. <laughs> I cannot play it tonight. I mean, it comes out at 2 a.m. And I'd imagine there's going to be downloads, it's going to be 100 gigabytes, and everybody's going to yeah. be doing it, so it's going to be really hard to get. So probably, most likely, no. And I don't even think I'll have time to do it tomorrow, unfortunately. So I don't know. This, this all of a sudden within 24 hours became the busiest week of my life <laughs> out of nowhere. It's like, boom, here's what all this have, shit put in your lap. What do you have to do? Call of Duty? <laughs> uh, uh, Mario Maker? Among Us? I was going to make a video on playing PS5 and Xbox games on my Switch with the with the Android Switch. Right. But I found out when I started this video, I accidentally deleted Android off of the Switch. 
Oh. So in order to make that video, I need to reinstall Android, which is going to be a whole process. So I have to do that potentially next week. So this week's video is on this thing. <laughs> You'll find out on Thursday what it is. It's all the okay. manga, all instructions is in Japanese. I had to freaking figure out how to use it on my own. It's been a, a project. Oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> also, the Ninji was over the weekend. The new Mario Ninja. It's hard. Well, it's right. hard to be a content creator these days, you know? Oh, believe me, I know. <laughs> uh, Amandowski, hey, Bob, what do you think would the world be if Digimon became popular instead of Pokemon? There'd be a lot more poop. Yeah. Digimon poop. It, it, would, it, would, be, it would be a very strange place. It would but who be. knows? It, maybe I, maybe it would be a better world. Maybe maybe the Mets would have finally won a World Series in my lifetime instead of just getting to the end and just shitting the bed like they always do. I think uh, Digimon might be a little more uh, like a touch more violent or, or like mm. grittier than Pokemon. Oh, definitely. So maybe the world might be a little bit grittier. Also, uh, a lot more ska. Because the I know the movie had ska music in it. It's good to know. Well, I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, ska would be the dominant music genre. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, AJ says, "What are we gonna do if, if Sephiroth drops there?" Oh, that's another thing. Thursday, uh, me, Dan, AJ, and MDB are gonna be playing Minecraft again. Oh boy. So in this week of all of this stuff dropping where I should probably be playing that stuff, I already committed to playing Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> so um and all these freaking people want to play Among Us now because it's on the Switch. So yeah. it all of a sudden all, I just have to say no to some people, you know. Um yeah, if Sephiroth drops then uh, the whole week's fucked. Anyway, Foul2996 says 27 month hype Among Us Switch stream when? You will, put the bell on, all right? I'm stressed out. <laughs> uh, is Will reading King in Black Thoughts, says Sardi? Uh, I am not. That is, uh, I think, Marvel's current Venom event. And I've, apparently, Venom under Donny Cates has been incredible. I just have not gotten around to reading any Marvel other than Fantastic Four for the last it, few years. And even Fantastic Four is testing my patience right now. <laughs> is that the Celestial Gods Venom? I think that's part of it. Okay. Um, I am finally all caught up on The Mandalorian. Nice. I, I actually watched the series. You should be proud of me. I am very proud of you, especially because apparently this week's the last episode of season two. It is so very good. Oh, it's very good. It's very, very good. It's inc it's it's amazing for a show that's essentially very expensive fan fiction. Yeah, it's amazing how like good good they are at it. There's so much opportunity for them to uh, pull from expanded universe, and they yeah. did a little bit. <laughs> Well, they that's what I mean by like fan fiction because they'll like take things that they specifically liked mm -hmm. growing up and then they'll incorporate it into the show. Things like um, the Stormtrooper Transporter, which was a Hasbro made toy, no, a Kenner toy back in the 70s, never in any of the movies. They put it in the show. I did not the, realize that. Yeah. Uh, John Favreau has said this is basically like. Um, if we got handed a bunch of shitty Star Wars action figures and a Boba Fett by accident, what do we do? Just... I, I, I kind of forced myself to get up to speed on it because of all yeah. the spoilers. There were so many spoilers on the internet, and I, I would have rather have found a lot of that stuff out on my own. Yeah. Um, one little piece, I won't say what it is, but was kind of surprised me. Um, this isn't a spoiler, but there's a part where uh, the Mandalorian is speaking uh, Tuscan. And yeah. he he's he's gesturing with his hands, and they reverse the clip, just like in the original when the Tusker Raider is going like this. Oh yeah, it was freaking. I was like, wow, this yeah. is freaking great. 
It's a great show. I don't know how I feel about them for all of a sudden doing all million shows. I guess it's working out for them. The only one anybody wanted was the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Yeah. And now we're getting like a thousand more. But whatever. Rogue Squadron at least is a movie. That's going to be a movie. <laughs> uh meta sensation yeah i'd much rather them all be movies meta sensation says it's just a western anthology with space costumes turns out that's pretty good i think it's an anime it's just like an anime yeah well it's it's essentially it's it's lone wolf and cub the classic manga but in space Mm -hmm. so i having to explain that to my wife was was very difficult the things with western i mean it is you get a western vibe from it but the thing with yeah. westerns is that it's all building tension until a cool thing happens and yeah. it's a lot of just nothing until a cool thing happens. mandalorian has cool shit happening all the time yeah there's there's not much tension the, the walking dead had tension for like many episodes yeah um lone wolf and jetpack <laughs> Uh, all right. I think we're done here, Will. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast, so that you can watch it on demand whenever you want. If you'd rather listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast over on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. No matter where you listen to, though, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on those all of those respective stores. Uh, e is playing cyberpunk. Go watch E. Uh, so mm-hmm. Put the notifications on this Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash Wolfden. So you know when we go live. We'll probably play Among Us at some point with the whole crew. Oh, and if you don't, if you're too stubborn to go to Twitch, then go to YouTube.com slash Wolfden Clips so you can catch it when it's edited eventually. Uh, we have a clip of Mario Maker going up, I think, tomorrow, maybe. If it's ready. Uh if you're here live go say hi to e he is playing cyberpunk on his pc and it's a pretty beefy pc uh thank you all for being here see you later goodbye bye